what what were some problems that uh came you know that that uh that you experienced during your uh, process of drinking um so my story is um I had a lot of issues with drinking um, starting in high school from the first time I drank. I was a freshman and my mom found me passed out in the bathroom. Um, and really from there, like looking back, I know I had, I had just had an issues with alcohol. Um, throughout high school and college, I got in trouble with the law a lot everywhere. Anything from like uh, underage consumption, I got like marijuana possession, I got obstruction of the legal process, and then culminated in a DWI. And um, the DUI ended up getting dismissed. And so I had to do like a, one of those blow machines for a little bit. But then once that ended, I just drank exactly how I did. Um, and then I went to law school and I was preparing to take the bar exam. And I, with that process, you have to disclose everything that you've ever gotten in trouble for with the law, whether that's either like child, you know, a divorce, you have to report to them. So I just laid everything out very honestly. And I had to go get all these documents from the courts. And the court told me that I had a warrant out for my arrest um, because they had recharged the DWI without me knowing. So um, I ended up, I guess, serving my time for that um, five months or five years after it happened. Um, and with the bar exam, they also have this moral character section. Um, and I had for that, because of all of my issues with drinking, they wanted me to go to AA meetings. I had to um, get a card signed that three meetings a week. And then I also had to submit to random um, drug and alcohol testing, which they could detect liquor five days after you drank. So I was really taking that seriously and I didn't drink at all. So that was back in 2014, 2015, I got a year and a half sober. But after I took the bar exam and I didn't pass two times, I just decided, you know, screw this and I'm going to not do the moral character anymore and not pursue this. And I went out drinking again. Um, and looking back, I can see exactly like how my drinking progressed in these past five years, just from when I first started drinking after a year and a half sober, you know, I would drink on the weekends and then as the, you know, or with people, but then as the years progressed, it was becoming more and more drinking alone drinking every day, drinking before work, drinking after work, like my whole world revolved around drinking and I was very isolating. Yeah, I'd still like go hang out with friends, but I'd always drink before and after. And, you know, I, I knew I had a problem, like I said, from the first time I drank basically, but it's really um, this last time when I wanted to get sober, it was because I wanted to because I knew my life was just like in kind of like not shambles, but it was definitely a rock bottom because um, my whole world just revolved around drinking and I literally felt sick all the time. And that was how it was. And that's when I wanted to stop for myself because I knew I just couldn't live like that any longer. Wow. And then so that's a lot. That, I mean, thank you for sharing. I mean, which is cool because, you know, uh, uh, some people, they, you know, when it comes to certain jobs, they don't understand that the, the possibility of that being there, you know, that you have to submit to, like you said, a random alcohol test, alcohol and drug testing and things like that. And then for, for you to come clean and be honest, that that takes a lot of courage right there within itself. You know what I mean? Even though like when I was in the military, I mean, it didn't matter. We would get random urinalysis. It could be almost every day if they wanted to. But, you know, that that's big. I mean, and for you to I mean, because I, I like I said, I've been there, too. I, I've, I've experienced the, you know, not passing an exam, um, you know, relationship issues that led me to drink. And it was like, okay, nah, I don't think I should be doing this. And the same thing, like, with, with what you just mentioned in terms of, like, drinking before you went to work. I, I did that, too. 
you know, and 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 didn't really it didn't it didn't it didn't matter to me. Like I, I just I didn't care personally because I was going through what I was going through, and so that's pretty neat. Um, let's see. So at any point, um, you oh so how was the so how was it like going to AA and like you know because it was almost like you were checking the box, but were you getting something out of it when you were actually at AA? Yeah. So the when I had that year and a half, and I, I feel like that period of time of sobriety that I had, that 18 months, that was kind of almost, I call it like forced on me. Like I didn't want to be there, but I had to. Mm -hmm. And I liked going to the meetings. I didn't get far in the steps at all because in the back of my mind, I was like, I'm going to drink again after this. You know, I'm just doing this to get my bar you know, my attorney license, and then I knew I was going to drink again. So I was kind of just going through the steps without putting in the actual work, which I feel like is different this time for me. Um, I am an AA again. Um, but this time, like, I really am putting in the work on, you know, the steps, making amends um, from, you know, past and healing my relationships, most importantly, and healing myself. And, okay. you know, getting in touch with a higher power as well. I feel okay. like is, is I, you know, they're very different when you're forced to do something compared to when you want to do it for yourself. And yeah, I think yeah. that's the biggest difference for me. All uh, right. Yeah. I, 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 I know the feeling cause the, the three times that I had went to rehab before I got it, you know, the, all three of those were forced my family, the military um, family again, but the last time it was like, you know, it's either I, I'm choosing life or death. And it was like, okay, you, you still want, you know, you still got a lot more years to live. So there's no sense of uh, punishing yourself anymore. But I commend you though, because I mean, making those decisions, is not easy for anybody and for you to do it and, you know, accepting, okay, hey, I, I made a mistake before, but to be able to come back and now, you know, you have a, a different mindset and, and, and basically saying, OK, this is for me. It's not for a job. It's not for a family member or for anybody else. And that's what it is. And those, in, in this program of being sober, regardless of if you practice AA or anything else, you have to be selfish. If not, mm -hmm. it's going to be a challenge in terms of, uh, you know, maintaining the sobriety. So um, yeah. let's see. So. Um, you you were just mentioning um, you're back in AA. Now, do you have a sponsor or are you just, you know, you're still early in it, so you haven't gotten one yet? Which which what side are you on uh, right now? I do have a sponsor. Um, and I really like, for me personally, um, using AAs um, just as like one component in my recovery. So, like, I love my sponsor. We really connect, and she helps me a lot. Obviously, she's a great sounding board and someone I can ask advice, to, you know, advice for. Um, but I also love, you know, I think meditation is a huge component. Um, I read a ton of Quitlet, um, which I really like because you get a lot of different perspectives. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I go to meetings. I have my, like, set ones every week. So, now are you are you doing in person meetings or are you doing uh the Zoom meetings? So I um went back to A to AA in January of twenty twenty and then like COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I started doing in person then, but then when COVID happened, uh everything went on Zoom mm -hmm. and I had a lot of like I would I would, you know, get a couple weeks or a couple months and then I would drink again over all of last pretty much all of last year. Um, so long story short, I'm doing Zoom. So basically, you know, ever since I have my date in November, I've been doing all Zoom meetings. Okay. And um, since you since you mentioned something, uh, since you just mentioned about the pandemic, um, what were some, um, you know, what were some of the challenges um, that you, you may have faced during the pandemic 
um, just last year before, you know, making that decision in uh, November to get sober? Like, what were some of the challenges that you may have faced? Like you said, you know, you might have gotten sober for a month, you know, like that. So what what what, what was um, some difficulties that you were dealing with personally during during the pandemic? I mean, but not, not not without going like in super duper detail, yeah. just more or less like, you know, you know, so for other people to get an understanding, you know, that they may have been facing the same thing during the pandemic in the early stages. I mean. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, I feel like I would just feel like really hopeless, I guess, mm -hmm. or just like, I don't know how to explain it, but like. Yeah, like hopeless. Like I don't know what's happening and it's scary. And I was at that time away from my family living in Los Angeles alone. So I didn't have any like connection. That was a huge part of it, I think, as well, why I couldn't get like a significant amount of time sober consecutively. Because I was just like isolated, literally. Um and I, you know, I think maybe boredom I was experiencing as well. Like I didn't really have my work was very much at a standstill. I wasn't doing a lot. So I was like, oh, well, when I was, you know, when I'd have to go in the office, I'd always think, oh, I wish like I didn't have to go in the office. Like I could just drink all day. Well, the pandemic kind of provided me that for, you know, a little while until again, it just became way too, you know, too much for my health, my mental health. Um, and I think that's, you know, I, I wasn't experiencing human contact a lot. And I think that's really what like kept me walking down to the liquor store down the street mm. during the pandemic. And, and see, and, and that's, <clears throat> you know, I don't know the st statistics about it, but I, I think I probably need to look this up because I know that because there were so many people last year that were uh, working uh, remotely from home, that those bad habits that they may have only um, did when they got off work at, you know, 6 or 7 p.m. until the time they went to bed. Now they have that opportunity to do it all day, every day, you know, Monday through Friday at home. And I'm sure that the, the number of people um, increased in terms of, you know, picking up, you know, alcoholism or starting to abuse it during that time because, like I said, they are at home. They are mm -hmm. alone. There, there are, you know, constantly, you know, one, you know, minds are wondering because nobody knew what was going on last year. And heck, today we still don't really know what's going on. So, yeah. I mean, it, I trust me, even with me, like it, it was it was a challenge for me, even though I knew that I didn't want to have a drink. But it was just like, do I want to go outside? Do I even want to go talk to a neighbor? I mean, that, yeah. that's the, the extent of it. And even now, like sometimes I'm even hesitant to talk to my neighbors now because of the variants that, you know, keep coming in. The, the cases are so bad here in Florida. So, yeah. um, so, uh, let me see. Now do, now in terms of, you know, you talked about, you know, you having the support system. Now, mm -hmm. was it easy for you to, um, you know, share with others, you know, friends and family that, you know, you, you're, you're trying to, you know, not trying, but you're walking the path of sobriety. Was that, did you face any challenges with that or from anybody backlash? Um, no, I wouldn't say any backlash. Um, I mean, just because of the like hell I've put my family through my immediate family members, they all know or knew, like I was, you know, they all knew my struggles with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Um, I honestly didn't really, I haven't experienced it yet, but I also haven't really been like out in the world, okay. I guess, due to like COVID and then also, you know, me being, um, so I was in Los Angeles and I moved back home to Minnesota during the pandemic. Um, and so I haven't really like had that experience yet. My closest mm -hmm. friends do know I don't drink okay. anymore. Um, okay. Like how I mostly just handle it now is um, I just, I don't know. Like some people I feel comfortable telling and some people I just don't feel the need to bring it up unless they ask. Mm -hmm. um, and what I am uh, have done a little bit since being sober is I have dated a little. So that's another like completely other path I have to navigate. Like mm -hmm. I was 
on a date the other day and you know they were mentioning how great of a selection of craft beers this restaurant had and mm. he asked you know what's your favorite craft beer and I just said I don't drink and he asked me oh ever and I said no mm. so you know and it's my whole thing on that with other people is like and I've been to two weddings now um they were smaller but you know, I didn't drink and it was fine. And what I learned from those is like, people don't really care. <laughs> Honestly, like mostly people just care about themselves and the people that do care usually have a problem with alcohol themselves. I mm -hmm. Not yeah. like saying, I mean, it's kind of not saying everyone, but like they shouldn't care, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just the end of it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I, you know, when I was, you know, that, that first year of uh, being sober, I, you know, I went on a few dates and it was more or less like they were asking the question, like, wow, you're, you're really like sober. Like, what, you know, what was it? Like, what, why, why, you know, and then, and then I had to explain my past, but then I, like, it, 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 it almost took away from the night because they were more focused on the drinking and everything else that came with, with my past over let's just get to know each other. But I understand what you're saying. Cause I, you know, when someone asked me a question like that, I would, I would know how I would answer it because, you know, you don't want to offend them because I've had that conversation. Like, um, yeah, I just don't drink. Why not? And I'm like, well, for one, I've already, you know, I've already been in, lived my 20s. I've already lived my 30s. So partying and drinking is is not, you know, something that I still want to do at this age. So, yeah, that good luck to you. Good luck to you on the dating. I would tell you good luck. It's, it's, you know, it's, you know, however each person makes it. But it's, you know, I guess in a way you got to prepare a script in your mind just in case if those drinking questions do come up. Yeah, definitely. And I do like to be honest about it. Um, mm -hmm. if someone asks right you know and, but oh sorry go ahead oh you good go ahead go ahead go ahead i was just gonna say like at the end of the day i know my life is better without alcohol in it and like i i want to be surrounded by people that can support me with that that's so, that, that, that's the most important thing really mm -hmm. so um now you you mentioned the dating now, what, like, what are some activities that you, um, you know, that you experienced drinking that, um, that you may have, you may have gave up, um, because, you know, because of the drinking or you still continue to do, but it, you know, you have a, a different feeling to it now that you don't drink. Yeah. So dating, like I did give up on that. Um, mostly because I was more concerned about like drinking after work than meeting up with somebody <clears throat> to see if we got along. Um, <clears throat> so that's something that's definitely picked up. Um, I also used to like drink before going on hikes, which I don't know how I did that. Um, <clears throat> but now I like hike and without drinking and it's way better. Um, let's see, I was just before we went live here talking to you about, um, so I grew up in Minnesota on a lake and all of our summer activity would be basically going on the lake and drinking. Um, and this summer being back home, I got to experience going on the lake without drinking and just having that um, experience of doing things sober that I used to do drunk I'm just seeing like how much better it is, honestly, for myself. Um, like I don't get dehydrated. I don't want to like just pass out on the boat. Um, so yeah, those are probably the main things that like I'm experiencing. I mean, like I said, I went to weddings. Um, usually I, I mean, I never thought I'd go to a wedding sober and it's better than, you know, I thought it would be. Mm. So just things like that. I mean, I even used to drink before taking my dog for a walk. So, mm. you know, doing that now sober is a big game changer for me. And uh, do you feel like you had to almost like train yourself? You know how it is, you know, you had to learn how to ride a bike as a kid. Now you're, you know, you're doing 
some of the same similar activities that you may have done drinking, but now you're not. Did you did you have yeah. to change anything up during that time or it just, you know, it just kind of came together? I mean, I definitely I mean, before the weddings, I definitely had like a script in my head if anyone asked, you know, why I'm not drinking, but no one did. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say for me, like preparing myself includes like a morning meditation, working out, like just to clear my mind. So that way I'm better prepared, like mentally going into things. Okay. Sober. And um, to continue on that, have you found any, any new activities um, since uh, getting sober that you've picked up on? Like I, since, uh, you know, one of the main things that I picked up on is the love for traveling. And I, I try to go everywhere as possible and, and try to experience some type of landmark um, in each city that I go to. I mean, it can be a, a baseball, you know, a minor league baseball stadium to a, a statue or something. Has there any, you know, have you found that, like, you know, you mentioned meditation, um, you know, these, these activities. Um, it, and I guess the reason why I'm saying that is because, um, you know, we, we, we have to keep ourselves, our, our minds busy. You know, we have to keep ourselves busy. And if we have a lot of idle time, it can usually, it can lead to uh, bad habits. So mm -hmm. I guess that's more or less what the question is. Yeah, I just actually a couple of weeks ago started to run, which I am not a runner at all. But I've been really into fitness since quitting drinking. I mean, I would work out before, you know, when I would drink. But a lot of times I just like wouldn't show up to the class because I would feel too hungover the next day or, you know, I just didn't put in the effort like I am now. I feel like my, you know, so I just bought new running shoes because I, I really want to try this now. Um, I have, let's see, what else? Yeah, meditation is like a huge thing for me that I actually make time for. I've been reading a lot more. Um, especially like Quitlet books. Um, I really like Holly Whitaker's Quit Like a Woman uh, and Andy, Annie Grace. Um, she has The Snake in Mind. So I feel like my reading has, like, I love to read now. And that's really, I've always loved to read, but it really disappeared over the years that I was drinking. I just would make no time for it. Um, and so now just like finding that peace, I guess. Mm. Um, and like letting my mind wander and like think about stuff. I think just like thinking has been like, like a new thing for me um, because I would just like use alcohol just to like quiet my thoughts so much and just numb out. So now like, I feel like I'm like overthinking everything, but it's just like, oh, I'm actually aware of things now. And that's why I feel like my brain's going like a million miles a minute, which is why I like to quiet it with stuff like meditation and reading and running. But okay. yeah. And, so, and, 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 and what about, what about this? Uh, you left out one thing. What about this other, uh, hobby, well, I ain't gonna say hobby, uh, another talent that you have and that's writing uh, some really good blogs. And oh, um, yeah. so, so when, when did, did you have the, the writing, bug in you before or was this something that you more or less picked up during uh during your uh sobriety um you know just being more expressive with uh with your words yeah i think it's kind of the same thing with like reading that i just mm -hmm. mentioned like it was always there but it mm -hmm. got so i just became so out of touch with it when i was drinking i i just like had no interest in it um so yeah, thanks for bringing up the blog. Um, so now, yeah, I'm trying, you know, I'm putting, trying to put out one blog post every week and just being really consistent with it just to hopefully like, I don't know, maybe my words will help someone else someday. And, you know, I just think it's really important that like people know that you're not in this alone. Right. And, and like, it's something, you know, that affects so many people, um, but it can feel so, so alone when you're in it. So, so, so very true. So very true. And, um, mm -hmm. speaking of your blog, um, 
you 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 wrote this article and uh it was uh can you go to vegas and stay sober and immediately immediately when i read it like <laughs> when i saw the title i was like no not you know <laughs> just i mean well i'm looking at it from the standpoint like would i be able to do it in the first year like i i, I know myself especially during that time like if i would have got out of rehab and a month later they said hey somebody's getting married you got to go to vegas then it's probably going to crush all hopes of me being sober so um i guess uh you know, you know, with Vegas, you know, as they say, anything goes in Vegas and it's 24 hours. I know the last time I went, um, you know, I went to, I think it was uh, one of the, you know, it was on the strip. I think it was like Circle K or something. And the guy was like, he was, you know, it was like five o'clock, five or six o'clock in the morning. He was like, he's like, yeah, you know, you can open this up in the store. And I'm like, what you mean? It was a can of beer. And he's like, yeah, man, this is Vegas. You can do whatever you want. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And and that moment is when I knew, okay, I can't stay this whole weekend. And I didn't even stay in Vegas for 24 hours. It was just that bad of a trip. And and I haven't been back since. And I was in 2015. So, um, Well, that's very, you, like, great that you knew that about yourself and could just, like, remove yourself from that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so how was it um, – how was it for you uh, going to Vegas? Now, how how early in your sobriety did you uh, did you go on that trip? Uh, so, like almost nine, like eight and a half months. Okay. Over. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I did go with um, my best friend, who is seven years sober. Okay. So that helped a lot, and that's kind of why I went, just because uh, she was invited with her boyfriend and a group of um, people. And so she asked if I wanted to go. And, you know, I, and this, you know, becoming, getting sober for me, I'm, I guess I'm not nervous, but like I always was worried that I would become boring or like not, you know, not fun anymore. And so I kind of wanted to go just to prove to myself, like I can still go out and be in the world and, you know, go to places that are typically like drinking places like Vegas mm -hmm and still be sober and you know still participate in life mm. so that's part of the reason why i went um because okay. i knew like i'd have that support of my best friend and like you know just so i you know could do something sober mm. um so you know i think that was a big part of it but even though i like had that support I still, yeah, there were a couple times where I was like, oh, I really want to just like go down to the bar and get a drink. Mm -hmm. um, so there definitely were like, you know, those triggers there. And mm -hmm. I did like think about drinking, but I think what really stopped me is just like knowing I'd go see my friend and I didn't want to let her down, you know, mm -hmm. either. So okay. I think, you know, that's, that was, like when what really triggered it was when I went to my room to be like and I was alone so it's like again like that isolation that that um missing connection from other people I mm. feel like is when it really came up like you know that I wanted to go and drink mm. yeah, that, that's yeah that's 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 a hard that's a hard part especially in 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 such a city like that where like I said it, it's so accessible like it's you like mm -hmm. you said you you know you you were on you're at the slot machine and the lady walked by you know on the cart or something you know asking for drinks it's like it's constantly it's everywhere even when you least expect it somebody is giving you a coupon for free drinks and stuff so that's that's where yeah. I know that it will it would definitely uh, be a challenge even now you know even though I'm this long in sobriety I think it you know the first you know, the the first day or so probably would be like, oh, nah, I know what I used to do when I was in Vegas. And I just don't, you know, I have to find somewhere not to go. Maybe just try out some restaurants or something and not necessarily be in that lifestyle. But, um, yeah, that's what I tried to do. I tried to really focus on the food. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I, I mean, that's another thing that since getting sober, I've really had like grown an appreciation for, you know, food. 
I feel like mm. everything honestly like tastes better. Mm -hmm. My taste buds aren't getting like singed off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, so you know, we went to a lot of really nice restaurants, and that was really fun. Like that was my fun for that trip. And it's funny because we did go for like an early morning walk at like six a.m. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we saw you know people, you know whatever, walking home. So mm -hmm. it it was very different, like being on that side of it. Um, but yeah, Vegas, like ultimately, would I go there again? Probably not. Unless it was like a, a spa, like outside of the strip thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll I, I probably, I'll probably go for the shopping. I, you know, I, I, they, they have a nice little outdoor outlet mall. I, I would love to spend a couple of dollars at the Nike store, but yeah, I don't, I don't think I could do that lifestyle <laughs> of things that I used to do. Like it's, uh, uh, I don't even want to be nowhere near it. So, um, yeah. Let me see. Uh, now, now that that was your experience. Um, you know, you know, you you were nine months, uh, eight to nine months in, into your sobriety. Um, would you would you truly recommend that to somebody, especially if um, now what if what if it was the exact opposite? You had somebody that, you know, to a certain extent was there in the support system, you know, towards the latter party, even if the support system wasn't there. But what if it was the exact opposite? Now, what if it's somebody that, you know, you're sober, but, you know, everybody else around them isn't? So I guess would, would you know, and like I said, th this is just our own opinions. Would, would you recommend that to somebody like um, the, as an as a option, you know, going to Vegas, you know, early in the sobriety? Uh, no, I would not recommend it unless, like, you're really going there for a purpose. Like, sure. and that's a lot of my, you know, a lot of um, getting sober for me has been like setting boundaries and deciding what I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So one of my big things is like, say, you know, someone invites you to a birthday party, but it's in a bar. Well, like, would I go to that? Well, it's a, like, I consider like, is that person close to me? You know, or how close of a relationship do we have? And if I decide to go, know that I'm going there for a purpose for that friend, you know, saying hi to them or whatever, and then knowing when I exit. And that's kind of how I looked at Vegas. Like, I was going there, like, so there was, um, like, other things that we were doing with the group that they had, like, work things. So they were doing, like, a live show or whatnot. So we went there with a purpose to go see, you know, my friend's boyfriend live show. And then, like, you know, pe other people around us were drinking. So it, it was just, like, knowing when to go back to my room and, like, mm -hmm. separating that. Yeah, it was hard. And I, that's why I wouldn't recommend it, just because, you know, I had that, like, my friend there to really be supportive. I had my, you know, my family and my sponsor that I was communicating with as well. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it unless you really have, like, a purpose to go there. That, that that makes a whole lot of sense. Now, um, let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, um, you were just you were just talking about boundaries. Um, yeah. Now, um, why why you know why is it important um, for um, people to set those boundaries? And 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 regardless of it, the boundaries you know if it's message sent to friends, to family, and so on and so forth. Why is it important? to set those boundaries and let that, you know, put that out there early. Honestly, it just like protects my mental health. And like, I think just really like knowing where my limits are has just been so helpful. Um, I don't know, like bound, like, you know, so for example, my mom, I love her. Um, but she, we were with some of her friends and she mentioned to them that like, I wasn't drinking that night. And, you know, after I felt that wasn't really necessary or like really her place to say anything. So after that, I just said, can you please not bring up, you know, my lack, my not drinking to other people and like putting that, I think just like setting where like I I don't know, like just setting my limits, basically, I think is important because like, 
no when you're in sobriety you have to know that it like comes first and when your boundaries can be easily be like bent I feel like that's when it starts down a slippery slope to well maybe one drink can't hurt like that's mm. when it gets back like I feel like if I don't put boundaries around every other area in my life I could easily slip into that thinking of like oh well I can just have one drink I'm sure it'll be right. fine it's been nine months you know like I could easily slip into that thinking mm. so I feel so, like putting boundaries in place is really to protect myself and then protect protect myself from like going down that slippery slope right yeah which which I think is is definitely uh something important um like I said I, I had to do that early in my sobriety um I have friends that in, in Minnesota um that that I used to party with um when I like I said I, I don't know if you're familiar but I used to work for uh, B96 in the early oh, 2000s yeah. and um so you know we we had a group of us that you know went to all the respective clubs you know throughout the Twin Cities and so this particular friend she still I guess because she she knew all the times of me drinking so for me to finally say okay I give it up I don't want to drink no more and like I said I was in St. Cloud she had called me and was like hey I'm having a get-together um I think down in Burnsville or something like that and so the very first question I asked her was is there going to be alcohol she said yes. And then, mind you, her townhouse wasn't the biggest. So I was more or less like, I can't be in no closed confines with all this alcohol that I know is going to be in this house within the first couple of months of me being sober. And she didn't understand that. She just thought that like I was trying to be you know, better than everybody there that was drinking or I'm going to be like, Oh, this is why you shouldn't drink. Nah, I, I chose not to drink because of my, for my own personal reasons. It has nothing to do with anybody else. But I knew early that I didn't want to be in those type of environments to where it's like, I still have to go home. And with me having to go home, the mindset of me like, oh man, like I just been around all this alcohol. The first thing I'm going to want to do is go get something to drink. So mm -hmm. in order for me to, to protect myself, I had to tell her no. And I'll be honest, we're not friends to this day. And one of my friends, I won't mention her name, she wants me to rectify the situation, but I felt like no, because she's trying to, you know, compromise my sobriety. And it's early in sobriety at that. And especially when someone like she know like knew my past from 03 to 2016. So it's not like she didn't know. So that's why I was like, okay this is a little bit serious or more serious than I ever had tried to get sober. So, so yeah, so boundaries are definitely, are uh, definitely important and key early in sobriety and you gotta, you know, maintain it. And, um, all right, let's see. Okay. Uh, all right. So one more thing before we close this out. So if, if you had a message for Michaela, Day one, being sober. Now um, you you've been you've been sober for some time now. What would be something? Um, let's see, what, 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 knowing okay, what would it be knowing? Um, like the the okay, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the advice you would give yourself like the the day you decided to get uh, get sober. Like what would what would you give yourself today? that you, you may not have knew, like I said, this is the time you decided to get sober and now you are, but you were still kind of second guessing yourself. So now that you're at this point and you have this mindset, what would be advice that you would tell yourself? I think I'd want myself to know just like as hard as it can seem and as hard as like, I, you know, as much as like, sometimes I just don't want to be sober um like I like I would just tell myself like you can do this like you can make it through the most difficult cravings you can make it through the worst negative thoughts you can make it through you know the the tricks that my mind plays on me about drinking and like if I just hold on you know like things will be better on the other side mm -hmm. and like just keep going I think like because even on like the worst days and the days that I want to give up, 
if I don't and if I just like keep pushing ahead without a drink even if I have to like literally sit on my hands or like there has been times when I literally have just like gone to sleep because Mm. I don't like I don't want to drink and like so I'll just go to bed early because hopefully it'll you know get rid of the craving and it does and you know they only last well like a couple like a minute or something I think I read Mm. like cravings don't last that long Mm. but it's really just like I think I would let myself know like you can do it and like there are people there who will be there for you and you're not in this alone and it's going to be like a great journey getting to know yourself and love yourself again and I think that's like one thing that really got lost for me is like myself and loving myself and like I'm just I'm like hopeful now instead of feeling hopeless like I said Uh, when I was drinking, like, now I'm feeling finally, like, hopeful for the first time, like, in a long time. Mm. And and, and I I think it's it's really dope that, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, loving yourself. Uh, A lot of times during um, our our drinking, you know, we, we, we may have had so much going on at once. And for in our, our problems just couldn't get better and and so a lot of times we didn't like we didn't love each other we we obviously didn't because we we uh, abused the poison you know putting that alcohol in our bodies altering our minds um for whatever reason like you said it could have been you you going out for a walk or you going on on a nature walk or something and the alcohol the good thing about it is is that now you're living your life sober you're enjoying your life sober. You, you, you definitely seem to be much happier sober. And, and, and that's what it is, you know, and like you said, you mentioned mental mental health. If it, I mean, I I can talk for hours about what mental health and alcohol and how, because I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize that I had any issues with mental health until I started drinking, despite the fact knowing that I had these problems, I just didn't go to alcohol. But when I went to alcohol, it wasn't pretty. So, but yeah. um, but um, do you have anything for me uh, before we close? I just want to say, like, I look. I was looking at some of your merchandise today, and I for sure am getting some of those joggers. I love those. They look so cute. Perfect. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I am definitely uh, am trying to um, you know, get you know, just get the twelve faces of sober just out there in general um is you know a lot of people think up front that the 12 you know it has something to do with the 12 steps it's not it's the first year i got you know when i drank i was 12 years old got drunk i'm sorry Mm -hmm. and versus the 12 years of battling with alcoholism but um you know i like i said my my main thing is that you know one day um you know my book can get in the hands of the right person because the story itself is, is a great story is, you know, it can definitely help a lot of people. And that's the purpose of why I'm doing the podcast is because I want, you know, people to come on here, share their stories because there are so many people that can relate. And just as you have the courage to come on here and share, there might be somebody that doesn't have the courage, but needs to hear it so that one day they can get to that point. So like I said, I, I truly, I thank you. Um, it's always good, you know, to have somebody from Minnesota. So it's, you know, even with that, because people, you know, you can relate even more. Like you said, you, you mentioned in the, the conversation about Lake Minnetonka, I've been on there. So I know what you're talking about. So, and that that's the wonderful thing about the, the sobriety journey is that, you know, you, you get a chance to meet good people and you know, and, and you just navigate through it. And and that's what I've been yeah. trying to do. And um I, I wish you nothing but luck um as you yeah. continue with this because um it's it's not easy, but it's fun. It's fun because you, you get the opportunity to to read, like you learn, you know, you get to know yourself again. You get yeah. to know what you like and dislike, uh environments that you that you feel comfortable going into in environments that you have no business being in. 
and 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 that's the luxury compared to drinking and you're just constant like oh oh look, we're going here oh we're going there oh we're, yep you know yep. and so yeah but i wish you nothing but the best of luck and i'm gonna continue to follow you now that i know that our anniversaries are right around the, or a couple of days from each other so i'll definitely be reaching out and um but yeah i i appreciate you coming on and i appreciate you sharing it it's uh amazing and I hope that there's at least one person that was listening that will be able to take something from what you shared today or tonight. Yeah. So. And I'm, thank you again. It was just an honor to talk to you and be on your podcast. And I can't wait to see what you do in the future as well. Thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate it. And I'm going to, and uh, um, I'm going to post, I'm going to tag somebody or, or send the information on what we talked about. Cause uh, I got someone very talented that you, might want to uh, have a conversation with but uh, like i said once again thank you so much and um continue success on your uh road uh you know to continue uh the sobriety is going to get you know much funner and the the dating scene will get better you know you just got to get past that first (laughs) year and you'll be straight all right awesome all right you have a good night take care thanks you too all right now goodbye